when we decided to follow Jesus. Did we count the cost? Luke 14, 28 through 30. I don't think any of us considered the cost and the commitment in following Jesus Christ. It is costly. I know that the revelation knowledge that the Holy Spirit of God gives me and when I share it, I know that the enemy is going to attack. I know that. I always prepare for some type of spiritual warfare. Because in the past, it has been a pattern of the enemy. Because of the revelation knowledge that certainly the enemy does not want going out into the entire world. But I'm not afraid of the enemy. I am obedient to the Holy Spirit of God. But nevertheless, how many times that I said, Dear Lord in heaven above, why me? Oh my goodness. I can't count. I have suffered. And knowing that my suffering and my labor of love is not in vain. We all know that. And we know the cost to be a disciple. Have you counted the cost? Do you have enough of what it takes to finish? Hey, I'm not only preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself, too. Because I know the cost. Jesus said in the book of Luke 14, 25 through 33. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brother, his sister, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. That's the cost. Whosoever does not bear my cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Our journey isn't easy. And the road is not paved with gold. In Luke 9, 57 through 62, someone said to Jesus, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said that the foxes have holes. The birds of the air nest. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. He said, Lord, let me first bury my father. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But go and preach the kingdom of God. And again another said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. Jesus said, no one, listen to me, church, no one that puts his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And listen to what Hebrews 10, 35 through 39 tells us. Therefore, 
Do not cast your confidence, which has great rewards, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while. And who, he who is coming will come and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 12 and 23 said that the church of the firstborn is the spirits of just men made perfect. Hebrews 10 and 38, but if any man draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. And this right here sounds so much like me and so many others in Hebrews 5, 7, and 8. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with tears to him who was able to to save him from death and was heard of his godly fear though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered don't we all Romans 12 and 1 we present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God church we were already sacrificed when we were buried with Jesus Christ through baptism into his death. That just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I don't know about you, church. I have decided to follow Jesus. Making him the Lord of my life. And I am saved by what he has done. Not by what I have done for him. Counting the cost. And putting my hands to the plow. And certainly knowing by the power of the Holy Ghost, there is no turning back. And I love that song that I have decided to follow Jesus because I love him. It doesn't matter if you're in the valley or in the wilderness. No matter where you are, there will be no turning back. If you have decided to follow Jesus, every one of us counted the cost. And many times, and even the Holy Spirit of God has said this to me, my friend, you have been in the battle too long and all you can see is the battle and the scars of everything you have suffered. But remember the reason you are in the battle. We all have to be reminded of our first love. You know how you felt when you came to God and you loved him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? When you accepted Jesus, that's what we need to remember. Our first love. Because he never left us. He never gave up on us. And we should never give up on him. We are all in this together, church. 
And that's the truth. And we're all in this for love. All of us. Because we love him. And we have decided to follow Jesus on the highway to heaven. And there is no turning back. And when Jesus is talking about counting the cost, and he's talking about building the tower, and to see if you have enough to finish the tower, that if you don't have enough to finish it, then others will mock you. It also made me think of Nimrod, that he started to build a tower, and he did not sit down first to count the cost, to see if he would have enough to finish it. Can you imagine those that laughed and mocked Nimrod because the tower was not finished because he did not count the cost. It will make you think, won't it, church? It will make you think. There are always deeper and higher places in the Word of God if we're willing to search it out. You think on these things, my dear precious friends. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I love you, my dear friends.